Welcome to Organize with professional organizer Rachel Seavey. Every Sunday at 6 p.m., Rachel shares her expertise and compassionate approach to help you deal with overwhelming clutter. Rachel? Hey, collectors! Welcome to the Organize podcast. I am your host, professional organizer Rachel Seavey, and we are discussing the six human needs. Last week, we discussed the human need for certainty what most of us need to feel comfortable and safe with things and we're certain about. This week's human's need is the second human need, which is for uncertainty and variety. Now, I know this sounds a bit confusing with the first need being certainty and then the second need being uncertainty. But if we were certain about everything, we'd live such boring lives, collectors. I mean, we all crave uncertainty, which is also excitement and variety. Some of us get variety by picking out different colored yarn at the craft store, and some of us get variety by skydiving. Everybody has a different sense and level of variety, but we all crave it and we all need it, just like certainty. I know a lot of you out there have an item that you like a lot, and you're certain you like it, and so you have many different colors or styles of this same item because you like the variety. I know a lot of us like surprises. We like variety. You know, if you have pets, I discussed this a couple weeks ago. If you're an animal lover like me, you definitely, definitely have uncertainty and variety in your life because you're always uncertain if your pet is going to be good or not. I mean, there's always variety. There's uncertainty when it comes to dealing with your pets and kids. At least that's my experience. And there are many times when certainty and uncertainty play together. You know, uh, I'll give you some examples. We all have those books that we love. I mean, you might have even read it a couple of times. You're certain, certain, certain that you love it, but you're kind of hoping that you forgot enough about it that there's enough variety to keep you entertained again. Same thing for me with Disneyland or Santa Cruz, which I go to a lot. I love Splash Mountain and there's so much variety, uh, but I'm certain that I will enjoy it. So I go on it every year, certain I love it, but it's because of the variety. I, I forget every single thing or they'll add things or it's, it's certainty and uncertainty together. Does that make sense? When it comes to clutter, which is what we're talking about, this podcast, there's a huge level, huge level, guys, of uncertainty. You're definitely, so you're certain that you're uncertain, okay? You're, you're definitely uncertain about what people think about you. You're uncertain if for some reason you're going to lose your home because it's deemed unsafe from some outside authority. So that's some, you know, uncertainty there. If you stack a pile high enough, there's definitely variety, there's uncertainty there because for sure it's going to avalanche at some point when that point of repose is off, but you're uncertain as to how everything will fall. It'll be kind of a, a fall of variety of things. So we all need uncertainty and variety in our lives. I mean, it's just as important as certainty. And we just all have different levels of what makes us feel comfortable. Some of us feel comfortable with just one pair of shoes until they're certain that they're falling apart and no longer serving them. So they just have one pair of shoes and when that one, you know, fails, they get a new pair of shoes. Other people need 300 pairs of shoes and some of which have never even been opened, still in the box. But for some reason, just knowing that they have all these shoes makes them feel certain. So certainty and uncertainty definitely go hand in hand. You know, you could be certain that you love your Michael Kors, but uncertain how that one Michael Kors blouse feels so snug. You know, are you certain that you wanna keep it? Are you uncertain? And honing into your certainty and uncertainty is very important while decluttering. 
So the buzz these days, Marie Kondo, I love her. She's really got something when she asks you if things bring you joy. When you look at a particular item, does it make you light up? How do you feel inside? Does it make you fall in love again with that item? If not, adios, sayonara. Uh, are you uncertain? Try it on and see how it fits. Don't just let things sit there collecting dust. Now, I did an episode on this a, a couple of weeks ago. A lot of the time, you know, you don't know if things bring you joy or everything might bring you joy. Everything you pick up might bring you a little piece of joy, but it's, it's your uncertainty that's holding your back. It's your uncertainty that's keeping you from the very, very most thing you want in life collectors, which is an organized home. So Marie wants you to hone in on your certainty when she asks this question. And one of your biggest struggles, dear collectors, I mean, at least from my observation, and I've worked with thousands of people just like you, it's your inability to hone in on your certainty on whether you like an item or whether you want to keep it or donate it. Where does it go? How do you get it there? This is what's holding you back. And when this happens, this is when you become ambivalent. Which is something I'll be actually discussing next month with one of my favorite colleagues. And when it's when you're unsure, I mean, you're uncertain and nothing happens. You're sure you want to get organized. You know that you want to get organized, but you're uncertain where to start. So absolutely nothing happens. And this is very common. You're not alone. So if you do find this happens with you, please keep listening. I do have... Uh, some strategies in this episode and you're certainly not alone. It's definitely one of the biggest setbacks is people just not knowing whether they're certain about their items and they don't know where to start and where to take them to. And once you're able to hone in on your certainty, once you're able to understand what it feels like when an item does bring you joy, your life will have a lot more clarity. But it's really hard for some of you to hone in on that. So we're working on that. I do understand. I have ideas for people that find joy in everything in this episode. But I'd like to tell you just a real quick story about just this wonderful client that I work with who just loves her variety. All sorts of everything. She loves it. Scissors, bags, clothing, books, stationery, organizing supplies. She loves it all. And she buys them all in different shapes and different sizes because she just loves her various things. She has all sorts of variety in her life. Does that sound familiar? I mean, she's got 12 different hammers, at least 20 different hair dryers, each unique in their own way. Do you have different likes and interests and have multiples of similar items in your home? You're not alone. So what do you do when you're in this situation? This is the time where we start taking action. What do you do when you can't be certain about an item? What do you do if everything brings you joy? You set boundaries. You set boundaries with yourself and you set boundaries with the physical items. So what do I mean by this? Setting boundaries with your stuff can actually be quite simple if you just use visual cues. If you love scarves, then just allow yourself one plastic bin of scarves. And once it gets full, once you can't close that lid on there, even if you're sitting on it, I mean, that's your maximum amount of scarves. That is the boundary you are setting with your scarves. And the boundary that you set with yourself is, so what if you want to buy another scarf, but your bin is just chock full? Then you use the one in and one out method. And what I say, what I mean when I say one in and one out is that's the boundary you're setting with yourself. This is a method that you're going to use if you buy something new, something in your wardrobe has to go out. So if you want one new scarf, 
Excellent. Three new scarves. Wonderful. Find three scarves to donate so the new ones have room. I definitely follow this rule. It's a great way to keep organized just using a visual cue of space. Uh, this is a way you can meet certainty and variety in a healthy, uncluttered way. You're certain you have one bin of scarves, but inside the array of variety makes you happy. You could do the same thing with pens. If you love pens or somehow tend to end up with a million pens, set yourself a certain limit. One cup of pens per room, okay? That sounds great. You're setting a limit with the stuff. If you get more pens, you set a limit with yourself. You put the new ones in and you make room for them by donating however many pens you just brought in. It's a very simple strategy and method to use if you don't know what brings you joy. The key is not to create another bin for scarves or, hey, I'm just going to do one more cup of pen. You really have to set boundaries with yourself. You must set those boundaries, otherwise it won't work. And visual boundaries, like a clear plastic bin, those are really helpful. I mean, it gets full and that's your limit. If you want another scarf, if you want another hat, great. Take one out and make room for it. So hopefully this makes sense. I mean, I do understand we all like variety. It, it does make us feel alive. So back to my client that I love to work with and that loves lots of everything, this method really worked. I mean, we have to set limits on space for a variety of all sorts of stuff. So for instance, she has a bin for scarves, a top shelf for hats, one rod in her closet for blouses, one bookshelf. You know, so what did we do with all the rest of the stuff? I mean, the stuff that didn't fit into the areas that were specifically for them, we donated them. And and it was hard, I'm not gonna say this is easy, this was hard, but they just didn't fit in the amount of space that we had allocated. And that's why her home was so cluttered. And she was just tired of having clothing on the floor and books and papers and, and just so tired of the mess. She was so tired of the disorganization that she was living in that that donating was less pain. She was in more pain, being mortified when people stopped by. She could never have anyone over. That brought her a lot of pain, a lot more pain than donating stuff. And she wanted her home back. She wanted her life back. She wanted to be able to have friends and family over and have her windows open and not be ashamed. Um, and she had a lot of books also, which, you know, that's, just, for me, I love books too. It's a huge, source of variety. I mean, every topic you could think about, but you know, we discussed that she didn't have enough days literally in her life left to read all of these books. So we really did donate a lot and she's got one bookshelf. It's full of variety. I mean, you've got cooking, you've got self-help, you've got spiritual, you've got mathematics, but, but that is the only area for books in her home. So you must be certain about the space you allocate to your variety of likes. Does this make sense? Would this work for you? I mean, are you fed up enough? She got to a certain point in her life where she was so fed up with a clutter, so fed up with a mess that that brought her more pain than having to let go of the stuff. You know, it's okay to like many, many different things, but you you know, if you love crafts, you don't have to buy the whole craft store just because you like crafts. You always have to make sure that you have the space to enjoy your belongings so that you can use your belongings. I mean, your house isn't a storage unit. It's, it's really fun to use your stuff and it's cool to have a variety and do lots of hobbies, but follow through with them. Make sure you have enough room in your home to truly enjoy your many interests. Otherwise, what's the point? I mean, if you have 300 scarves, but they're blocked into your closet and walked off by a mound of clothing, 
And you can't even access them, so you just keep buying new scarves, even though you've got 300 scarves in your closet. Anyway, so here's a tip that I want you to implement today. If you do have 300 scarves and you can access them, and they all, at this moment, bring you joy, wear a new scarf each day. I mean, get your variety on. We're not promise tomorrow collectors it's it's really time to start enjoying all that stuff you have i mean i see wonderful beautiful things that are absolutely neglected and not being used but rather stored and sometimes trampled on so <clears throat> sorry <laughs> i'll go back to my client um, we decided that she'd keep that one bookshelf worth of books, the one bin of scarves, the one shoe organizer worth of shoes. And she still has a variety of everything. I mean, she has a bunch of stuff. She is not a minimalist by any way or any means. But she knows where all of her stuff is. She knows what her limits and boundaries are for her space that she has. And she's able to use her stuff. I mean, this is so much better than everything in piles and Target bags just jammed together on the floor when we first met. And I even have limits with my stuff. I have a certain area for books. And, you know, if some come in that I really want to read, well, some go out, baby. Otherwise, I mean, there just isn't enough room. I'm not going to start piling, you know, stacking books up or get another bookshelf. That's no. And so the other day, I realized that my tank top drawer was looking really stuffed. I, I'm not even going to lie. It was looking stuffed. I mean, things were folded, but it was getting a little stuffed. So I remembered, oh, yeah, I had a girlfriend get me a tank top and I bought a couple of new tank tops recently. So no wonder. You know, duh, um, that's why my drawer was getting stuff. So I pulled them all out. I went through my tank tops. I found three because I realized I had gotten three new ones. I found three older tank tops that I hadn't worn in like six months, a year, and I donated them. I mean, I just absolutely hate a drawer that won't close. A drawer that's too crammed. You can't find anything when it's like that. I mean, I like to be able to see what I have and for the drawer to close. I mean, those are my standards. My standards are my tank top drawer has to close and it can't be crammed. I don't know how many tank tops that even is inside, to be honest with you. That's just the limit, the boundaries that I've set with myself and my tank tops. And you can do this too. Next week, we will continue chatting about the six human needs. And I'm going to be discussing the third human need. The need for significance. We all need to feel significant. And a lot of the times, we use our stuff to do so. If you are watching this on YouTube, collectors, make sure you're subscribed. Click that thumbs up button. Hit that notification bell and leave a comment. Until next time, collectors. And remember, happiness is a place between too little and too much. Now, a short ad break from Clarity Coaching. Do you feel overwhelmed with clutter? Are you having trouble finding a place to start? Sometimes it's hard to ask for help, especially with all of the judgment and shame out there. What you need is an experienced, non-judgmental, guide to help you navigate through your clutter chaos. I'm a guiding force that's going to help you empower yourself so you can live a happier, healthier, more organized life. I will take the time and I'm going to hold the space for you to understand your world, your dreams, your relationships, and your clutter. I do this with no judgment and no other agenda but to help you achieve what you want most in life. And this, my dear collectors, is something that most people have never experienced. To experience the life that you truly desire, schedule your free Clarity Coaching Session today by emailing me at rachel at 
CollectorCare.com. That's Rachel at CollectorCare.com. Or call me directly. I'm at 925-548-7750. That's in America. So that's area code 1-925-548-7750. Clarity consultations are complimentary for individuals seeking my coaching services, and they're very useful to make sure that we're the right fit for each other. Stop living in chaos and start living the organized life you desire. This has been Organized with Rachel C.V. New episodes are available every Sunday at 6 p.m. and also on the Collector Care YouTube channel. Download Rachel's Affirmations for Collectors on iTunes or Amazon.com or sign up for Rachel's blog at CollectorCare.com and receive seven tips for clutter-free living. Thanks for listening.